right, cool. Uh, so my name's Nika Mihalic. Uh, I'm a developer at Dockyard, and um, as Chris said before, we're a consultancy. We do uh, consulting and training for Elixir and Phoenix. So if you need something transitioned to Elixir, or you want us to build something in Elixir for you, um, drop us a line. So my talk is on, it's titled, Leveling Up Your Phoenix Projects with OTP. And uh, so Elixir and Phoenix have a lot of tools to augment the traditional web application stack. Uh, specifically, today we're talking about Gen Server OTP um, as a basis for building stateful subsystems in your application. Uh, that's useful in a lot of different examples, but we're gonna do one specifically today live. And um, this is my first conference talk, and I did the recommended thing, which is to live code Elixir from scratch, which everybody told me would be a good idea. So we're gonna do that today. Uh, the talk, we're gonna define what we're gonna build, we're gonna code it, and then we're gonna use it in a Phoenix application um, with zero hiccups. So, uh, backstory, uh, one day me and a coworker uh, were working on some OSS stuff, and we had a Rails add-on, or a Rails um, gem called PartyFowl, which would automatically um, log your exceptions to GitHub as issues, and it would do some nice things where it would find duplicate issues, and it would add comments to that, it would do some you know, nice assigning, things like that, so we said, well, why don't we do this for Phoenix? Um, so we were thinking, trying to think of a name, and we said, well, Phoenix is like a bird, right? So party foul, why not party foul? So that's what we're gonna build today. Um, so the design goals. Uh, we wanna support synchronous and asynchronous reporting. Uh, we wanna have some sort of load shedding back pressure management so we don't completely destroy application with this. Uh, we want it to be easily integrated into a Phoenix application. Uh, we also want it to be well tested so we know our stuff works. Uh, so now we're gonna get into the actual code. Uh, the more detailed plan of how we're gonna code it is um, we're gonna set up our project, we're gonna set up a error reporting system to GitHub, uh, we're gonna tweak that, make it a little bit better uh, in some ways you'll see. We're gonna do async reporting, and then we're gonna implement the load shedding back pressure. Uh, so that's the plan, and the only external dependency we're gonna use here is something called Tentacat, which is a wrapper for the um, GitHub API, and it just makes this whole thing a whole lot easier. So, we're going to throw this up here, and pull this up for me. Can you see that? Is that a decent size? More? More? Yeah. Okay. More? <laughs> we can keep going more. Um, all right. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to generate our project here with a mixed new party foul. And we're going to, um, the other thing is your typing gets way better when you're in front of a group of 130 people. Uh, we're gonna pass dash dash sup so we can get a supervision tree automatically. Uh, we're gonna go to party file mix test to make sure everything is okay as we expect. Uh, mix test. Okay, great, so that worked. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add Tentacat in here, which we're just gonna add as a dependency. So we'll open up our project here. Um, my script here. Okay, the, uh, in our mix file, we're gonna add Tentacat as a dependency here, which is the worst part of this because it has to go over the internet. And this is just straight out of their documentation. And the other thing we need to do is add it as a application, um, as an extra application we're running. The other piece is in our config file. Uh, we're going to need one piece of uh, configuration which we're gonna set up, which is gonna make the rest of this easier. Um, we're actually gonna set a config for party file um, called GitHub API and we're gonna make that uh, tend to cat. So if we wanted to swap this out for our own version of this later, we could do that, and it would be a problem. So uh, this is the worst part of this whole thing, where we're gonna get the dependency, and if it takes too long, I'll just, I might just rip it from the other backup I have. Yeah, we're not gonna wait for that. Um, so we're gonna copy, I think this should work. Uh, Is that still gonna work? Yeah, 
Yeah, I didn't want to have to hit the wire, but. In theory, this should work. Does anybody know if that's gonna, perfect, okay. Okay, great, so we're still good there. Uh, the other thing we're gonna implement is in our um, tests, since we're gonna be, we wanna test this thing not against the real GitHub every time, we're gonna make a support directory um, and implement a fake version of GitHub. So we're gonna call it fake github.ex, and it's gonna be, oh, Syntastic is talking over the wire, that's great. Okay, so our fake GitHub is gonna be module, uh, def module, uh, party foul dot fake GitHub. And the way this particular, uh, it's, it, there's an issues module here and it's got a create um, method owner, we don't care about repo, we don't care about the content we do, and the client we don't care about in this case. And all this is gonna do is return um, the title out of the content and body because that's really all GitHub issues are, title and a body, in this case, um, for this beginning part. And then the next thing we need to do is we need to go in and tell uh, Elixir to compile this stuff. Um, so we can add in here uh, another path here, which we'll define as a function off the mix environment. And I'm gonna, this is one of the sections I'm just gonna rip from a, I'm not gonna type everything because there are some functions that would just take too much time. So for tests, we wanna get this test support, um, and then for everything else, we just want the normal lib. Um, so now we can start writing the test that we're gonna use uh, for this, and we're gonna need some configuration stuff, which again, I will rip from here and explain what we're doing. Uh, so we're gonna put in, in our environment, instead of the actual um, tentacout, we're gonna use this fake GitHub thing we just created, uh, and then this is just configuration that the uh, we'll use when we put it into Phoenix, um, and this stuff doesn't matter, but eventually we'll be your GitHub, you just name your repo name, and then a access token for that. Um, and our test is gonna be pretty straightforward. Uh, we're just gonna make sure that the, for right now, we're just gonna make sure that the issue that we create with, you know, hello body world comes back as hello world. Um, there's not too much here, we're just adding the dependency of the project, so. Uh, if we're on mixed test again, uh, I spell something wrong here? Yep, this is supposed to be plural. Shows I'm not just faking the test. Am I missing something here? Uh, I've got this exactly as I have it here. Sorry? Uh, let me step this thing. Uh, test support, the fake it out is here. Yeah, I put that in the mix file here. Oh, this is, uh, this is paths, I'm sorry. There we go, it's always one, one character that kills you. Um, okay, so now that we've got this fake GitHub working in a test or something, um, we can go in here to actually writing um, some code to do some, do some things and report to GitHub. So in this application here, in our party file application, we're gonna define a function called report and that's gonna take the OTP app uh, so we can log errors per application, uh, the kind of error, the reason, uh, and the stack. Eventually these will come from Phoenix, um, which we'll see later, so that's why the, um, I'm operating with a little bit of special knowledge here on how this is gonna work. Uh, so we're gonna get our configuration stuff here out of, uh, out of, the, out of the environment, and uh, so we're gonna get the GitHub API um, concatenate together here the GitHub API.issues, because we know that's gonna have the same convention there, uh, get the configuration we need, make a client, and then uh, make an issue. And the issue title and issue body right now are gonna be fairly straightforward. Um, 
one thing we know we want is we want the issue body and the issue, the issue title to have something um, about the kind of error, so we'll get error colon something. Uh, and then a little bit about the reason, just so you can see from a glance what's going on. So um, we're just gonna expect, inspect it and grab 100 characters off that. Um, build the body with the, with the, uh, the um, issue ref, which we'll define in a second in the stack trace. And the issue ref is gonna come into use later um, when we have a unique identifier for the issue. So we're gonna get the module, the function, the ARD, and then the file and the line. So that way, um, later when we make this a little bit smarter, we can say, um, you know, we've seen this error before, and so you don't get a million issues um, opened up for one particular um, issue, one particular bug in your, in your code. Um, so, uh, this is really just, you know, constructing strings and things, um, but we're gonna write a test for that, and we're going to test that our report function, um, uh, for, should create an issue uh, with title, body, and stack trace. So the kind, this is uh, a little bit of cheating also. Um, we're make, gonna make a fake error here. Uh, which is more in the stack bit. This is like a fake error stack uh, with the module function arity, and then we'll say it's on file one, line two. Um, so we'll call our report function here uh, with our OTP app of whatever the test was on the kind reason in stack, and then I'm not gonna type out these assertions because the way those um, strings work out, there's a lot of new lines. But we're basically gonna make sure that the title has um, the kind of error that we passed in before, uh, that says something went wrong, and then we have this um, fake stack here, which is constructed um, over here in this um, exception.format. If you pass it a well-formed kind reason in stack, it will, it will do that um, and give you a nice looking um, issue a nice little stack trace with, you know, something went wrong on this, this module, this function, this line. So we should be able to run mixed test and uh, mess up our amount of ends. But everything's still good. So everything we've done so far is we've just um, passing in a kind, the kind of error, the reason, the stack trace, uh, able to construct a title and a body which look somewhat interesting for um, debugging purposes. Um, so that's everything really we need to report an issue to GitHub, um, but that's not really too useful because say you've got 100,000 users and they all hit your index page and they all hit the same error, you're gonna get 100,000 issues on GitHub opened instantly, which will get you in, you don't want that. <laughs> so <laughs> we're gonna change this a little bit um, to be a little bit smarter and look, try to find an existing issue. Um, we're gonna take advantage of that function with this issue ref um, we're just gonna assume that if the module function, arity, file, and line are the same, it's the same problem, um, which is close enough for this. Uh, so not too much is gonna change here, but instead of leaving, uh, opening a, another issue, we're going to leave a comment. So we're gonna make another the comments module here, which is uh, in the Tentacat case under issues comments, and we'll make a fake one very similar to that. Um, and instead of just building a straight new issue, we're gonna case on a function we're gonna write called find existing issue. And there's a issue.list, which we're gonna write as well in our fake GitHub, which just lists the issues um, for a particular owner on a repository um, repo client. Uh, and we're also gonna pass in the stack so we can build that ref again. And if we don't find one, uh, we're gonna do the same thing we did before where you build the body. Uh, but if we find an issue, we can make a comment and we can make the uh, body, uh, another function we're gonna write called build comment body, issue, kind, reason, stack, uh, similar to the other one, um, and then comments, which is that module for the API, uh, create owner repo issue number comment client, and this is just the signature of Tentacat, which we're going to um, replicate. So we need to build a, we're gonna grab a function here to find an existing issue, uh, which will take the issues that we listed and then our stack. Um, uh, 
So we're going to build an issue ref. Uh, from our stack, and then we're going to uh, find in our issues um, an issue that uh, string starts with uh, issue body body uh, is going to be our issue ref that we made, and that's all that's doing is saying. Um, is that the right line? Uh, we, we know we're, we're forming our issues in a certain way. If we don't change that, we can assume that, um, that the, uh, if we find something with the, with the same start of the body, it's the same issue. Uh, the other thing we need to do is build a comment body, which I'm gonna grab as well from a snippet. Um, and it's just gonna say occurred again, um, and then we'll get into what this get reaction is later. Uh, and then we'll build an issue body again off the same, off the same thing. So uh, also just for some fun and because the guy I was building this with is just as hip and trendy as I am, uh, we're gonna throw some emojis in here. So if you're, it's the first time it's probably okay, you're a little bit mad. Um, the second time you're disappointed, the third time, second, third time you're probably worrying, fourth and fifth time, and eventually you get up to the skull. Uh, so that's all we need. Um, we'll find an existing issue. If it's there, we'll build a comment with the appropriate reaction and post that to GitHub. Um, so now we can write a test for that. Um, so I'm not gonna type the whole thing out here, but it's gonna be very, very similar, um, except uh, we're going to, um, when we call report, this is gonna leave a comment instead of a, um, instead of an issue, and we can assert that it starts with, uh, and this will, this will probably fail because I don't think it'll match the Unicode, but um, we can fix that. In the, okay. Uh, so the only other thing we're missing here is this, this won't work because we don't have anything in our fake GitHub um, as a comment service. So we can just drop in the two things that we need, which are listing issues um, and a comments module. So the listing issues, um, we're just making this totally contrived, returning existing with the same uh, module and function that we've been testing with. And then we've got a comments module here uh, that lives under issues, which just returns content body for uh, creating. So if we run mixed test again, Uh, uh, is that not right? What's going on? Oh, yeah. What am I, oh. Is that what am I? What am I missing here? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, thank you. That's, yeah. Okay, there we go, thank you, appreciate that. <laughs> um, so yeah, that, so that leaves, an, finds the existing issue and then leaves um, a comment on that. Um, so that, that's not, you know, now we can get into actually something a little more interesting where we do things asynchronously. Um, so what we're gonna do is, in our application now we can start to do some um, gen server things and OTP stuff. Uh, so we're going to have a new supervisor and a new worker here. Um, we're gonna add, and it's gonna be um, error reporter. And this error reporter um, is what we're gonna write in a second, which will handle the, um, 
do the gen server stuff. So we're going to define another function here called report async, which will call the error reporter dot report with the same signature as report. So eventually you can just swap in and out report and report async, um, and it will just it will work the same way for your application. Uh, so we need to make a file uh, called error reporter, and that's going to be module party foul dot error reporter. Uh, we're going to use gen server. Our start link, um, this. I'm just going to grab this. And our init uh, is going to look sort of boring right for right now, but we will use the state later, which is why I'm going to leave this here for now. Um, and here's where uh, this is. Um, uh, we need to find that report function in here. So def uh, report is going to take that the same uh, signature, the OTP app, the kind, reason, stack, uh, cast, report, OTP app, kind, reason, stack. And then we need to uh, handle a cast for that. So what we're actually going to do here is call back into the party file that application. Uh, so everything's really just using the same function. So we're just going to start a child here um, with that task supervisor of party file application dot report, which will call that function that we just made. Uh, so that's really all we need to do for async. Um, really, just call our call itself, which which makes this really sort of nice. So we can make a um, test for this which will be slightly more complicated, but um, it's not too bad. So it's going to have a similar config as before, um, except we need to do two things differently. Uh, the first thing is we're going to make a, a different GitHub called GitHub async, and you'll see why we need to do that in a second, and then register um, on, on party test here so we can uh, test that we're actually doing the things that we want to do. Um, so first we'll do this, we'll write this fake GitHub client. Um, and that will look like this. So it'll have the same signature as everything else that we have, uh, except instead of like returning um, a function, it will send these, the, it'll send messages. So we can detect that we receive these um, with the cert receives and make sure that the right things are happening asynchronously um, you know, when we don't have return values. So this is the exact same um, stuff, returning just the straight up content because these are just you know, titles and issues and, and um, you know, titles and bodies. So uh, we'll go into our async test and we can actually write a test for this now. Um, so Report async for should create an issue with title, body, and stack trace. Uh, it'll be the same error, reason, uh, this, this fake stack that we had before. And then we're going to call into party foul dot application that report async config test the kind reason stack. And now we can say assert uh, receive create uh, and then what this, um, what we want to receive, which is really the, uh, in the, remember in the other test here, we were just checking that, um, you know, we're getting this new issue back and then we're making sure that the issues title and the issues body look like we expect. But in this case, we're just going to assert that, that second argument of um, you know, what, we're, that what we receive, which is really just the content, or in GitHub's case, the issue, um, make sure that that looks the way we expect. So we know that our async version is building the same exact kind of data structure that the synchronous version is. Um, and so we know that it's going to report to GitHub in the same way. Uh, right. 
should be that. So that works fine. Um, and just to prove that I'm not faking this, we can uh, there is, you know, this is actually testing something. Um, and the other thing we need to test is make sure that the uh, it's it's leaving a comment um, if the issue already exists. So we can test uh, that report async for uh, should leave a comment if the issue exists. And then we're gonna grab the same stuff here. We could, this could be dried up um, for sure, but. Um, application, report async, config test, find reason, stack. And then we can assert, um, assert receive uh, that there's a create here and it's just returning a body because we know the comments only have a body. So we can assert that that gets received um, when the, 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 the issue already exists. Um, right. I think I need to create one. Right, we don't need two of those. Okay, so that's the works. We know that our async is doing the exact same thing that the synchronous one is doing, and it has the same signatures. So we can just swap that out in our application depending on if we want synchronous or asynchronous reporting to GitHub. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is figure out the problem where if you've got 100,000 users and they all hit your index page and you've got a, you know, thousands of comments hitting your, um, go, getting posted to GitHub when they're all the same error, like there's a point where you don't want that to happen anymore. Um, so the way we can get around that is in our error reporter, we can um, start saying we only wanna see X number of issues in this certain time frame. So let's, let's make our time frame something um, and then say the max errors we wanna see is like 100, which is, I think, an okay. Um, so now we're gonna take, use this state. Uh, so we're gonna define a clear after time, which we can either pass in in the ops as a time frame um, or default to the time frame at the top. Uh, same thing for max errors. And then here's, um, the reason we've been passing the OTP app everywhere is we wanna do error, um, we wanna do this sort of like load shedding stuff per app so we can keep um, the apps that we're working with in addition to the number of errors per app that we have. So now in this, our handle um, cast here is gonna be slightly different in, we're gonna call case on this function we write called ink error. Uh, and that's gonna take the, the current state and the OTP app that we are working with. And um, uh, if we, match with okay state, which means we incremented the error. Um, we just do the same thing we did before and um, uh, you know, report the issue to GitHub. But if we get this error and we're gonna say rate limited, uh, we're gonna do no reply and the same state again. Uh, yep, thanks. Uh, what is it not like there? Oh yeah, ink error, we haven't written that right. <laughs> um, so ink error is going to be um, fairly straightforward. We will copy it though, because I'm running out of time, I believe. So um, what we're gonna look is in the, if that, in the state we keep their OTP apps, if the, you know, the count keyed by that OTP app we're passing in, is uh, you know, greater than our, our max errors, we're gonna turn that error rate limited. Um, if, if, it's, if it's not, we're going to just update the count by one. Um, the other thing we're gonna do is uh, we need a way to clear the history after the time frame is passed. So we're going to, def to define a function here called schedule history clear with the state, which will send after that clear state time um, to itself 
you know, clear state, and then that will just replace um, in that in that map with a with the blank with the blank map there. Um, and we need the only thing left is to call that schedule history clear up here from um, from init. So that should do everything we want there. Um, there. There's really not not too much, you know, just keeping track of your error counts and then and then clearing them when when you want to. Um, and the last thing we want to do is write a test for that and say do nothing if the rate limit is hit. So I'm running out of time here, so I'm doing a little more copying than I want. But to test if the rate limit's hit, um, do the same kind of reason the stack before. For 120 times, we call report async. And we check that only 100 times we receive the list, because we're checking if the issue exists, and then that create, um, and then we refute receive anything else. So if all goes well, run that. And of course, it doesn't work perfectly. Um, I'm missing one thing here, but this would. Said max error is 100 in the time frame. Um, I don't really know why that's happening. So, but I don't have time to debug it right now. Oh, am I not? Uh, oh, yes. Perfect. This is actually a test, and you won the prize for the rest of this. <laughs> See, there we go. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, so that, that's, uh, that's how that works. And so the very, very last end of this is I have this, um, I have this wonderful um, API here, and I love it. It's my pride and joy. And if I run it, let's, uh, once this runs, I will show you how great this is. Cool, so I'll hit my API, and this is my great API. Oh, darn, okay is not match, not okay. Um, well, good thing I have a way to add a uh, party file to this. So in the router, it actually makes it really simple um, because Phoenix has a, it's almost cheating how easy this is. But once you add the, um, it has a dependency, there's a plug called error handler. So you can just use error handler in your router and define a function here called handle errors. So it takes the connection and then the, this is the kind reason stack. So you just call party file dot application dot report or report async with, you know, the OTP app, the kind reason in the stack. And if we go to GitHub, this is the, repository that I made for this. Uh, no, we have an issue there. Okay, not okay. And if I go in here and I start spamming my API, because uh, first you have to run the API. It's like, why is this working? Why is this working? Why is this working? And then I have a bunch of comments left on here with increasingly uh, <laughs> bad emojis. So uh, basically the takeaway is you can use um, stuff that GenServer and OTP provide you to make these little you know, stateful subsystems that can work in your Phoenix application for um, you know, useful ways. And that didn't take too long. And um, you know, hopefully, it, hopefully that is, uh, you, know, you can use that in some of your applications. So. Oh, and thank you to um, Doug Yoon and Chris McCord for help on this, because they both contributed to the um, development of this. And it will, this will be on the Docker GitHub um, at some point, probably next week, if you do want to use this in your applications or just reference the code. Um, it'll be up there. So um, yeah, thank you. <laughs>